Okay, I want to close out here by talking very simply and summarizing what we've heard today. And as Curtis says, that it's been amazing to see the cohesion in the problem statements, what everyone's come together with. And I honestly did not make these slides after you all talked. So you may see some common themes here. But I want to talk about why Armis and why now. And there are three themes that are very apparent to Armis, and I've heard them time and time again today. And those are cyber resilience, modernizing, transforming, optimizing our environments. From a cyber resilience perspective, you know, we can't stop the cyber attack, but what we can do is try to mitigate the impacts on operations through cyber attack. That's the important thing. You know, from a modernizing and digitizing perspective, I see goodness here. We are in a renaissance of technology. We see incredible new hardware, new software, new ways to connect like never before. We can now control our supply chain, our operations, like we've never done in the past. That's good. And from an optimization perspective, the bottom line and productivity matters. It can be the difference maker of our quarterly earnings results or not. And with energy prices spiking, with the carbon footprint we need to think about, these are all critical things we have to consider. So these three themes, Armis is incredibly passionate about. I want to just double click very quickly into each of these and then bring it home. Let's start with cyber resilience. As Jean said this morning, cyber attack is on the rise. Guess what? It's not going away. You know, why is that? Well, there's a massive business here. And the attackers will always, always want to choose the easy button. They'll always want to look for open credentials or default passwords. Yes, people still do that. Or access to the Active Directory domain. And what's happening with all these new connected devices that we're seeing explode onto our environments is the number of exploitable vulnerabilities is out of control. We are literally giving an open platter to the attackers to go, hey, go, this is the easy button, guys. That's exactly what we're doing. And what does that do? The attack surface grows and grows and grows. So it's not linear, this is exponential. And as that attack surface grows, so does the number of alerts, the number of events, the number of CVEs. If I'm an analyst, I come in every morning and I see another 10,000 alerts or 55,000 CVEs I need to look at. Is that good? The answer is no. What happens as humans is we become numb to this. This becomes noise, white noise, this frothiness. How on earth do I cope with thousands of alerts, events, just it's mind boggling what we need to do here. The problem is we do not have enough visibility. We have to up-level our visibility, but not only that, we have to add the context of what we're seeing, the insights of what we're seeing, in order to start to reduce this noise. I talk about it as improving the signal-to-noise ratio. If we don't do this now, there is no hope for us in the future. I'm sorry to be very blunt, but the alerts are going up at an astounding rate. And if we don't start to pull back and provide clarity on what actually matters, we won't be able to cut through that noise in the future. So we need context of what's going on. And the need here is very, very simple. Focus on what actually matters. Cut through that noise. Focus on the business issues as we discussed today. We also need to make sure we up-level our visibility. Find out the who, what, where, when of all the asset intelligence, as we've been discussing. And the big question is, how do we go do that without impacting our operations? Next one is around modernizing and digitizing, transforming ourselves. And again, the good news here is we've got more technology than we know what to do with. The costs of hardware are plummeting. The costs of connectivity have plummeted over the past couple of years. 
just to give you an example, the ability now for us to connect our devices is unparalleled. With high-frequency 5G, we can now put about a million devices per square kilometer and connect those all back. With 6G coming up, we can have 10 million devices per square kilometer. Just try to imagine that for a second. I haven't done the math on that, but it's probably quite, quite dense. So this is giving us the ability to inspect our business, monitor, control it like never before. However, there is a side of risk to that. Obviously, as we just said, the more stuff we put in, it's just math, it's statistics. The risk goes up. So how do we do this? How do we transform ourselves while also reducing risk? And how do we do that in a way that doesn't disrupt our operations? And finally, on optimization. As Sean just pointed out, we have to baseline where we are in order to optimize. We have to understand where we are in order to figure out what's being overutilized or underutilized. And the way we're doing it now is very manual. We're literally walking to a particular site with a clipboard in the case of that food company. And we're only seeing the knowns. We're only seeing a finite point of what we understand to be in our environment. And we're doing this on a non-continuous basis. We're taking a snapshot in time, understanding, yep, that's what we've got, taking it back. So we're not seeing the peaks and valleys. We're not seeing the trends of what's going on. And that's not allowing us to understand fundamentally how to properly optimize our systems. What's being fully utilized? What's duplicative? What's going end of life? What's going end of maintenance? What can we go decommission? How do we buy down debt, or technical debt, and reduce our risk? So the need here, as we've discussed today, is a continuous system which is automated, which is pervasive, and one where we're not sending out people to all the different sites with a clipboard. So why Armis? We've taken these three areas, and we've designed Armas from the ground up to focus on cyber resilience, focusing on helping our clients modernize and digitize, and helping them optimize through that process. And from a cyber resilience perspective, as we discussed, Armas can give incredible levels of asset visibility. But not only that, when we talk about asset intelligence, the who, what, where, when. And why is that important? It's important because if you understand the context of something, you can start to cut through that noise. Let me give you an example. Take an engineering workstation, very typical. And the engineering workstation typically updates in a quiet period. Maybe it's uh, Tuesday at 2 AM. And we've also seen a couple of mid-tier CVEs on that workstation. Great. Is that enough context for us to do something about it? It's not a trick question. Now, of course, context matters. Now, let me tell you something else. Deploying Armus can go far deeper than that. Yes, we can see all those things. But let me just explain this. If we can now say, hey, that engineering workstation was opening another connection on port 443, just simple SSL. It's linking to another IT workstation. That IT workstation is opening up another SSL connection to a Russian known malicious domain. And at the same time, that information is being downloaded and mimicking the uploads and downloads at 2 AM on Tuesdays. And by the way, that one CVE on our system, there's a known exploit on it. Does that give you the right context now? That's what Armus does. That's the level of context you need to cut through the noise. It's, it's all about taking this understanding and allowing us to figure out what truly matters to the business. We're not expecting to go through 55,000 CVEs and 20 million alerts. Those days are done. You have to cut through the noise. When we think about modernizing, we talk you know, a lot today. We've heard a lot about uh, IT and OT convergence. It's a journey. And it's actually a good thing. It's a good thing because when we start to see IT and OT coming together, 
we can start to understand how IT is impacting OT and how OT is impacting IT. And what Armist uniquely does is put an umbrella across both of those things. Once you see that full frame, once you kind of zoom back out, you can understand as you're going through modernization transformation, as you're walking through that long, long process, you can understand where you are. You can take back control because you've got more visibility on what's actually going on. Sounds basic, but we don't have that level of visibility today. And finally, on the optimization front, so I'll just say this. Armis is not another shiny tool. We often get asked that going, oh, you're another shiny tool. No. What Armis is, it's a fundamental rewrite of how to do security, a security architecture. It's starting from the ground up. We're literally going back to the fundamentals of what we have to do, going back to visibility, going back to understanding with asset intelligence. It's a fundamental rewrite. Why do I say that? It's important for optimization purposes. It's important because Armist starts to become the nervous system of everything else. We start to feed all that intelligence up the stack to other operational tools, to workflow, orchestration, SOAR, as just um, Sean pointed out, to ticketing systems, making CMDB more accurate. We start to become that nerve center. And we started to do it by reducing the noise as well. As well as that, the Armist was designed from the ground up to be a very easy thing to go deploy. We don't want to add more operational complexity. And it can be deployed within literally minutes. There's no truck rolls. There's no maintenance. There's no going on site every five minutes. And the learning time is zero. It learns automatically. Now, the beauty of all these things coming together is that we start to see a much broader picture of what's exactly happening. And by doing that, we can start to understand utilization of all the hardware, all the software components, all the hierarchies working together. We can start to then understand how do we remove technical debt? How do we reduce the burdens on our um, systems? How do we reduce our energy consumptions? Because we understand everything. It is a very, very, very powerful thing once you have that data. One gentleman said, too much data earlier. Yep, yeah, that, that's definitely a thing. But what we do is we're crisping this up to start to give you insight, what we call Armist Insights. And that allows us to optimize going forwards. Now, I want to just leave you with a couple of areas that we see. Obviously, Armist has been around now for five or six years. We are deployed in thousands of areas around the globe. We're in 40% of the Fortune 100, and we see a lot. So I thought it'd be a little bit funny just to show you a couple of things that we see in real world. The first one was at a bottling plant, and we saw Conflicker on a ton of stuff there. And we were able to remove and identify Log4j literally within minutes. Now, that's a pretty serious one. The bottling company had no clue this was going on. Second one was a bit more fun. This was a uh, manufacturing uh, for flooring, and we identified some guys in an IPDVR system that were browsing Chinese Facebook. Again, you can probably put that in the, in the camp of optimization, but that could have been you know, serious. The third one was a little more inter interesting. There was an electric uh, company we're working with, and they fly drones down the power lines, looking at vegetation, making sure they're clear. Unfortunately, that drone footage was being transmitted to Facebook live. Probably not a good idea. And then finally, in the world of chip manufacturing, we saw crypto mining on all the virtual machines that are in the fab fabrication process. So <laughs> this is, um, again, this goes back to a lot of those things we just sp spoke about, about cyber resilience, about looking how do we optimize our systems? How do we reduce this from happening? And how do we speed up modernization? That's what Armis is doing. And we are leading the way in doing that. And if you haven't seen Armis live in person, we have demonstrations here. And we also have a test drive, which is very, very quick. We can show you this for real on a pilot system or a site. 
we can do that within a day. So I want to thank you so, so much for taking the time today. Thank you.